Monagam, Nosef, Namaskar. Let us continue on the same radar plotting principle. If you uh, remember, we were uh, trying to solve a problem for radar plotting, the basic. So I'm going to just uh, continue from where we left. I'll call this part five. And just as a recap, if you remember, we had done the first seven points. That is what uh, we had finished last time because we found out RB and aspect. So we could uh, again come to a conclusion on the Coleridge also. And uh, if you remember the results of the last question, I'm continuing with the same, same question. You can see RB was 20 degree green and your aspect was 100 degree R. I'm going to try to show you in uh, a kind of approximate uh, real bridge view uh, with the limited uh, animation. Uh, please bear with me. It is not a real artificial intelligence. It's just still our own intelligence only. So I'm going to try to show you approximately what this scenario looks like. Let me uh, start with the first one. That means I'm going to show you how the navigator on our bridge is going to look and see the target. So I'm going to show you, let us say this is your bridge front, the center uh, window, you're standing here. And this is your heading, which was actually 040. I'm going to show you the starboard bow view. Why? Because uh, the target was 20 degree green. So he was on the starboard bow. Fine, kind of fine on the starboard bow. Okay. Couple of points, so approximately two points. So let us uh, look at uh, the target. So the target is going to look somewhat like this. That is the target's uh, approximate heading. This is not very accurate, but approximate. I can see him uh, more on the uh, quarter side. That means on the fourth quarter side. So still I'll be seeing his red light, a little bit of his red light because uh, it was 100 R. If you remember from him, it is 100 R. And I'm looking at 20 G. So this is how it will look for the man standing in our own bridge. Now I'm going to go to the target's bridge. Let me go to the target's wheelhouse. Picture will not be uh, very, very good, but it's still giving me a fair idea. Let me just show you. I'm going to uh, show you the bow of the target. And uh, the, the bow is shown a little bit slanted. Why? Because I need to show more of port, port quarter because uh, the target is, uh, the targets, uh, your aspect is coming as 100. So that means I should be showing a view on, uh, standing on the target with a port quarter. So I'm going to show you two more bridge windows. Uh, for a reference, I'm going to show you uh, port side bridge wing, just as a reference. And the own vessel will look like this, approximately. And since I'm seeing the starboard side of the own vessel, so I'll be seeing his, the own vessel's green light. So this is what was the situation which came out in the first seven results, or first six results, and the seventh one is your Coleridge. Now, let us say I have decided the Coleridge, and uh, it is going to ask me to take action. Let us say the rule says I should take action. So I'm going to show you what will be the new action and what will be the results of the new action. And that is what is point number eight. So we are going to discuss only about point number eight right now. And let us assume that I was supposed to uh, take action and uh, I'm going to do a course change. So this was the uh, last slide uh, where we stopped. This is where I finished my initial plotting and then later on we found out up till your RV and aspect. Uh, my course, if you uh, just to recap, it was 040 degree two okay, and was doing 12 knots. So after the call rigs, I've decided call rigs, let us assume that I'm going to do a change in course. So this is how you will work the future problem. I'm uh, giving you a choice. Let us say it was decided that I will uh, change uh, to a new course of 070, which is 30 degree to starboard from my original course, which is your 040. And I will do this action at 818. I've already marked some timestamps. Uh, eight o'clock was O uh, and uh, alpha was at 
eight twelve. But now I want to alter course at eight eighteen. So in a gist, alter course to zero seven zero degree two at eight eighteen. This is what is my plan. So I'm going to do a course change after some time. Now you should realize that if by chance nobody has taken any action, then the target which was at alpha will continue to be on the same original RML, which is your double arrow, the original first RML. So it will continue like this. This is how it would have gone if nothing was done. But now I'm planning to do a course alteration. And that course alteration was supposed to be done at 818. So I need to find out the point called 818, which is called the predicted position where the alteration is going to happen. So my job is to find that point P. Please remember point P is going to be only on the original RML because still 818, nobody has altered. So I need to find this point P. Now let us see how to do it. Okay, I'm going to measure OA for 12 minutes, which is already there. So this is what I will measure. Now when I know that uh, the target when it traveled from O to A in 12 minutes, traveled this amount of distance. I want to know in next next six minutes, why? Because he's asking me 818. So from 812 to 818, next six minutes, where will the target be? So I can use the same old ratio formula. You can reverse this ratio formula also. I can call it D1, T1 also. So I'm going to use this ratio formula and I want to find what will be the distance from alpha to my predicted position, which is AP, okay? So if you see the equation, I marked it. OA was measured, it was done in 12 minutes. AP, I want to know, and it should be done in six minutes, okay? So the target is still moving on the relative motion line, so all my time should be taken on the relative motion line. So I'm going to find that out. Let us assume that I got around 1.5 miles. This is the answer I got. So I'm going to plot that 1.5 miles from alpha and mark it on that original RML and that will be my papa and it is 818. So till 818, nothing has changed. So I already got my predicted position at 818. Let us proceed from here now. Now, I need to find out what changes can happen after 818. So at 818, I'm changing my course from 040 to 070. Uh, very important, the course change was done by own vessel. So own vessel's vector, original vector is WO. Please remember, do not touch W. If any changes happens, it should happen to O. So let us see what happens, okay? I'm going to start from W. I'm going to draw a new line called the new course called W uh, with 070. The engine speed was not touched in this question. So the engine speed is going to be still the same. I'm going to mark same the length of WO here also. And I'm going to call this O dash. So WO, which was 040, now it has become WO dash, which is 070. Again, mark it with a single arrow. This is represented by single arrow only. I've shown you in the center of the screen also as the new course. I'll just walk back. If you see, this was the original course 040 at Charlie. Now is the new course. I've got it 070. Now, uh, even when one side of the triangle WOA changes, the shape of the triangle is going to change. So let us see what happens. In this question, the target did not do anything because I did not give any data for change of target. So I'm going to maintain WA as it is. So WA does not change. And WA, if you remember, was for the same 12 minutes. And now what I've done is I've changed my course to WO dash. I will maintain the same interval. WO dash is also for 12 minutes only. This gives us a new RML. I have a new RML called O dash A. O dash is the new course because of my change, but A does not change. RML is always OA, but now it is called O dash A. I've changed the color. I'm going to join O dash A. This is the new RML because of my course change. I'm going to mark it with three arrows. Please keep on increasing the number of arrows of only RML because that is what is the most important data which will come in your ARPA. So the RML on the relative motion 
I've got a new RML with three arrows. If you realize this new RML is valid only from Papa onwards, that is after 818. So I'm going to transfer this new RML with my roller scale. I'm going to put it here. Mark this also triple arrow. This is important. Why? Because all the measurements of this new RML is, should be measured from O dash A, which is also with three arrows. So this just tells you that any measurement should be done with the same number of arrows. So please do not go to OA, which is different. That was only valid till 818, not after 818. So from P onwards, you will see since the target did not change his course and speed, he is going to travel like this. This is how he is going to travel in future after your papa. Okay. Now, what is the end result of this new action? Please remember, I applied Colrex. I changed my course so that I can have a better CPA. That was the normal aim for your Colrex. Because in the initial assessment, you would have realized you, your distance with him would have been very close, not as per the master's orders. So now what I've done is I've changed the course, created a new RML, and that RML is going away from you. So I need to find what is the new CPA, which is called the November dash or N dash, the CPA point. And I need to find the TCP also. This is what is your new results, which is point number eight. How I do it, I'm not going to repeat the whole thing. Now I'm going to look at a distance closest point of approach with the new RML. So that means I need to draw a right angle line from Charlie, okay? And that right angle is on the RML, always your CPA is perpendicular to the RML. So I've drawn it. I've already shown you before how to do it. You can use your set square and you can get a 90 degree, uh, which is very accurate. And that is called your N dash. Now, please remember I need two data. I need CPA and TCPA. CPA can be measured with C N dash. Just take your divider and measure C N dash. But what about TCPA? Please remember the TCPA can be found out by the duration or the distance called PN dash. Okay. From Papa onwards, whatever measurement you do, please do it only on O dash A, not your original RML, which is OA. So that is why the time calculation for PN dash, PN dash can be measured. So now you know that O dash A is a distance for 12 minutes again. I need to find out how much time it will take, the target will take to reach from P to N dash. And that is what you have to measure using your new RML called O dash A. Now with this, you can give the new results. So that uh, brings us to the end of uh, actually the first part of conclusion. It is not the final conclusion. Because right now I chose only course change by own vessel. Please remember there are more possibilities. There can be a speed change by own vessel. There can be course and speed change by target also. And sometimes there can be course and speed change from own vessel and target vessel at the same time also. Uh, the principles are still the same, but I'm stopping it here. Uh, let me call this uh, season one for radar plotting. Uh, it gives you a gist of how to uh, go about the basics for your ROC candidates. Uh, and of course, uh, even for the later candidates also, phase one or phase two. Uh, in case you feel that uh, you need some guidance on speed change or a combined uh, change of course in speed, you can always write a message to me on uh, the website or Jalprayag itself. And if needed, I'll make it. Otherwise, I'm planning to put a pause on this uh, subject right now. Uh, hope this was helpful. And I'm sure uh, the previous module, which was part four, uh, calculating RBN aspect, uh, I hope it was helpful. Why? Because that is the most confusing part. And uh, I can see there are a lot of people who have watched compared to the other videos. So hope this will also help you. Uh, please keep watching Jal Prayag. I'll come back with a new topic soon. Uh, until then, uh, Namaste, Namaskar.